When you get stuck on any problem writing software, are you really stuck? Or have you just not opened your mind to a path that leads to a potential solution? I don't know about you, but for me, coding feels like it's 90% being stuck and trying to figure out a way out, and only 10% being in a flow state where I'm just knocking out features. The thing about getting stuck on any problem, whether that's having framework issues, encountering a new bug, or just trying to understand some spaghetti code that someone else has left you with, is that getting stuck doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. If we have the right strategies in place to get unstuck quickly, that means we can continually jump from problem to problem and make progress rather than just get stuck and feel depressed about it. Now, after over two decades writing software, I can definitely remember some painful times of being stuck in the past. Most of the time, I wasn't really stuck. I was more just getting in my own way. To avoid that situation now, in this video, I'm gonna share the checklist that I wrote run through to get out of any bad situation fast. When you get stuck on a tricky coding problem, did you ever have the feeling of being stuck in a cage like an animal and just kind of lashing out and trying anything possible to get out of that situation? This is the primitive monkey brain in action. And by just trying random fixes without really thinking about the problem is not gonna lead anywhere. That's why when I get stuck, like I am right now on this project that I'm working on, I take a step back and make a list of things I know about the situation and also list out things that I should try to learn more about the problem. This reframes the idea of being stuck into more of a discovery process where you can engage your curiosity, find out more about the problem until you eventually stumble across a solution. Okay, so if making a list of items sounds like a good idea, what exactly should you put on that list? If you believe there is a solution available, you just need to figure out the steps in order to get there. And if I put this in context of the app I'm building right now, I've got this intermittent problem where I get an error when I click on a link. One thing I like to do is try to compare what I'm doing with another solution that works. And I happen to have another web application which has a very similar setup and doesn't suffer from the same error. When you've got a project which has a problem and a project that works, you just need to find the difference between the two. This is what I've been doing this morning, which I call the binary chop. I don't know whether this is the technical name, but let's say your application takes 10 different environment variables and you know one of them is causing a problem. How do you know which one to pick? Well, you can delete 50% of them, restart your application. If it still doesn't work, delete another 50%. If it does work, add another 50% back in. This is basically a way to hone in on the source of a problem in the fastest way possible. And once you get there, almost inevitably Inevitably, it will be a one-line change where you can add and remove it and see the bug appear and disappear. Have you ever had the situation where you've asked a colleague for help about a problem and as you've described the problem, the solution has come to mind? Yeah, it's embarrassing, isn't it? The reason this works is that when we very clearly describe a problem, it allows our brain to more easily tackle that problem and come up with a solution. Describing the problem to a friend or colleague is a great approach, but if you're working on your own like I am, you can clearly describe a problem by writing it out, talking to the camera like this, and do like a previous colleague of mine did and buy one of those little yellow rubber duckies and start talking to it. Have you ever used a big framework that you feel like should just work 100% properly and you just find some weird behavior and can't quite believe it's possible? Well, that's where I am right now with this Nuxt JavaScript framework. Finding a problem that shouldn't be there, but I don't really know how to solve it because I don't know how that framework works inside. Here's what you can do in that situation. Look through the documentation to see if there's a different way you can approach your problem. Like for me, I'm using server-side rendering right now and one alternative approach would be to generate generate all the HTML up front using static site generation. And even if that alternative approach isn't quite as good, it might be good enough for your project. I sometimes see bug reports where somebody's thrown all their toys out the pram and said, I'm going off to another framework. I'm not using this anymore. I think that's a last resort because it assumes that other framework is going to be perfect and not have different problems. So if possible, try to stick with the tools you're using and figure out how to use them in a way that works for your project. And once you've isolated whatever problem you're stuck on, you can actually reach out to the development team on GitHub, submit an issue and hopefully get feedback or even a solution, but don't rely on that happening anytime soon. Try to come up with a temporary workaround if possible. 
And when you get stuck enough times and find your way out, you realize it's just a temporary state that's inevitable for anyone that's interested in writing software. And it's your determination to overcome these problems that's gonna set you on the path to bringing your ideas into reality through software. See you in the next one.